Hello viewers, in today's video I'm going to have a look at this interesting flight controller slash frame combination. It's the 92mm micro FPV racing frame and uh, the main talking points. It is an SP Racing F3 Evo uh, variant, uh, brushed uh, frame flight controller, um, which apparently supports 1 to 2S with 10 amps per channel. So, okay, let's have a look at the frame itself. Obviously, you get an accessory pack with it. And this is the frame itself. And what do you expect with packaging? Um, here we go. It is 92mm from motor to motor apparently. Um, looks about on the money. It comes preloaded with Betaflight free firmware and an F3 uh, STM32 microprocessor. Um, obviously with that firmware and um, the way it's set up it'll be the usual um, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise uh, setup. Uh, props always turning inwards, front and backwards at the centre. Um, running down the port, USB port as usual. Um, this port on the left is a 4 pin uh, UART. Um, I believe it's ground 5 volt transmit and receive on 4 pins. On the right hand side here you have a 3 pin connector which is for PPM which I believe is UART2. Um, yeah, PPM, RX2, um, ground uh, 5 volt on RX2, and this third um, port over here is for DSM satellite connections, um, which is UART3 or RX3, which is uh, 3 volts and ground and RX3. Um, other notable things, it comes for a a spot for a 5 volt piezo buzzer, I presume it's 5 volt it looks a bit smaller than usual piezo buzzers um, it's in the accessory pack we'll get to shortly um, the motor connections uh, got traces for, out to the arms um, it's not a very thick frame um, so I don't know how durable it's going to be um, it's got a bit of flex in it, but with a brushed quad like this, I can't see it being too heavy. Um, but obviously people are trashing QX90s and so forth, so I don't see why well, this should be um, any more durable than <laughs> flying it like that. Um, we have a, I think that's um, a raw power output, uh, ground and battery voltage. And um, this would obviously have a step up or a step down regulator, depending on what you're inputting, which will up at 5 volts for your flight um, FPV gear. It has some nice um, placement of the holes to secure various FPV gear, may, maybe an all in one transmitter and camera, or maybe something like the new King Kong uh, Q25, I think it is. Where it's for a little CMOS camera with the offboard transmitter and a dipole. Um, I expect both will mount on there, no problems. And back here we have a couple more ports. Um, well, one of them's obviously um, a power output, uh, plus or minus. And the other, I'm not sure about, it looks like a a positive and a negative and a signal of some sort. Um, I've got no idea what that one is. Maybe it's a UART a breaker or something. The other thing to note on here, it has four uh, surface mount LEDs on the arms. 
which I think are already configured as LED strip. So that'll be handy and got a nice little feature. Um, with that, that's all that can really be said about the frame. Um, I presume these are the 10 amp uh, capable MOSFETs. Uh, no idea what they are. Um, so, with that, let's have a quick look at the accessory pack. Um, you get rubber motor mounts that will obviously slide into the arms here and then your 8.5mm motors will go up through um, I, think those are. I think you get 5 of those let's have a look um, 1, 2, 3, 4 um, I thought you got 5 obviously you just get 4 um, you get some nice foam sticky feet um, that'll be handy um, for I presume you can mount them here where the arms join the main bit um, so your LEDs are still visible or maybe just alongside yeah perhaps um, you get a copious amount of nice breakout cables this is the 4 pin um, UART for the S bus you probably only use three, so you can probably um, get a small knife or something and eject the pen you will not use. Um, I expect it will be the green one where we don't transmit, we just want uh, ground on black, power and receive on yellow, uh, which is the bottom in that orientation. Um, you get the three pin breakout which would be for PPM or I don't know it's um yes it is PPM the three pin one on this side. So the same again ground um, VCC or uh, 5 volts yeah it's 5 volts on PPM so it'll be stepped up from 1S or stepped down from 2S and the signal cable um, and then this is your spectrum satellite one it looks like it's got the micro GST or whatever you call it um, for this bottom right cable um, signal ground and 3 volts so that's those cables you get a couple of other cables uh, JST and a low C um, pick your poison you get the piezo buzzer um, not sure what voltage it is I think um, not sure if it's a long pin or a short pin one of the two is positive got a feeling it's a short one um, a couple of the same length and the other bit goes over oh it's the long one is the positive um, so obviously you'll get VBAT warning if you set it up in a flight controller um, if you don't run a timer or anything and last but not least you get these little things so I don't know what they actually do they look like they're in the same exact shape here I don't know if they're for oh yes there's a bit of a gap here where the circuit board isn't actually the right size so I presume it's for padding them out so you get a nice solid fit I'll take that off first and then try and do both at once obviously it is an identical fitment to the frame arm itself that looks good oh yeah sort of um Maybe it's a, a lock ring of some sort, but it just stops the um, slop in the rubber grommet for the mount of that. Um, I don't think that will add to it, the durability or anything, but I do think it will give you a bit more rigidity in the motors being kept where they should be. With that, I think that concludes the look at this 92mm uh, frame. Um, 
as I've said, there's um, 10 amp MOSFETs, LEDs, PPM, uh, Spectrum Satellite, S Bus, USB, Beta Flight 3, um, F3 chip, and um, quite a few handy little breakouts. Seems quite a comprehensive frame. I'm looking forward to building it. Obviously, it'll be an S, uh, 1S for me, but depending, um, it might be wise to get some. 2S cable with all 8.5mm, 20mm Russian motors to go on here. I might turn it into a demon. Uh, with that, thank you for taking the time to watch this. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them. I'll be happy to get back to you. Have a good day. Uh, welcome back. A quick update on. Uh, this frame, uh, plugged it in, no problem. Um, load up Beta Flight, and upon trying to connect to Beta Flight, um, it's not got Beta Flight on it. It has got Clean Flight version 1.13 um, for the SP Racing Evo target. Um, it looks like it's had a couple of minor things adjusted on it, but out of the box, uh, for example, oh yeah, VBAT, no problem, it's got a buzzer on it. Um, it's got a current meter and RSSI, and for example, telemetry, black box and race transponder enabled with no onboard data flash, uh, among other things. Um, so it's a bit strange at the moment. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will create a build video as such. Uh, plan to do it anyway. Um, documenting how about I will be updating this to Beta Flight, obviously, um, eventually. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll build the quad out as it stands with this firmware just to get it running. Um, but I don't know if you can see on the video footage here, there's a pin just behind the PPM port uh, labelled BT and it's got two um, solder points with a uh, silk screen trace running between them so I presume that is the boot pin. Um, I don't know if it's Betaflight itself or the firmware on it, but there's the um, CLI command, DFU, that may be of use putting this into bootloader mode if required to flash beta flight to it. Um, as I said, I will get round to doing it myself eventually, um, and I'll keep you posted.